Hi guys, I'm back with another Conquest Academy interview. Today I've got a very, very exciting guest. It's internet YouTube sensation, Jamie Sawyer. How are you doing, mate? I'm good, thanks, man. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good. I'm really good. How, how's lockdown treating you, first of all? It's a bit boring, isn't it? <laughs> it's all right, though. It's okay. It's um, got to just try and adapt to it, I guess. Um, but yeah, I think everyone's struggling a little bit, but it could always be worse. <laughs> Yeah, look, I'm I'm desperate for a barber's mate. Desperate. Um, are, you, <laughs> are you managing to do any any ball work still? You managed to get out and about? Yeah, yeah. I've still been like filming here and there. Um, obviously, there's no one to nutmeg at the moment, so <laughs> just other stuff. But yeah, just just getting a feel of the ball, like obviously by myself, just isolated by myself. Yeah, I think it's actually a good good time as well to to work on technical ability, really, because no training and stuff. So learn some skills in it <laughs> i'm gonna take you all the way back to when you were a little kid what what were your first memories of football what really got you into the sport and that built that passion up for you um i remember like just play like i feel like a lot of people in london have this memory like just playing in the football cage yeah. um, like in your estate like just uh just playing with the older kids, really. Like, I remember, like, always being the youngest and, like, the olders, like, had, like, the powerful shots. So I had to sort of, like, try and, like, work on my skills to, like, have something up on them. Um, but, yeah, man, just, just having fun, just playing football, going to the shop, getting one of those, like, ice poles, the 35 <laughs> ones, going back to the cage. Yeah, man, no, it's good times. That's probably my earliest memory, to be fair. So even from an early age, you were working on skills and stuff. I imagine you had to be quite tricky to get past the big guys. Yeah, I tried. Yeah, I tried. Um, yeah, man, I think it was just something that always just was. It was always the thing that I went to. Like, I wasn't like a goal. I was. I liked to score goals, but I'd always prefer to like not miss someone or, or do something. <laughs> Coaches didn't like it, but yeah, it just it just attracted to me. It must, it must seem like a world away now, but you did play at Conquest for a few years when you were younger. Let's go a little bit back there. Do you remember your time there? I do, yeah. I remember I went to Conquest. Um, I believe I spent some time at QPR and then I went to, uh, I think it was Kempton. Kempton? It was like somewhere in Surrey, like somewhere really far out in Surrey. And I was just getting tired of the journey. And I found Conquest in Isleworth. I think it was through Toby. I think Toby told me about them. Um, if it wasn't, then my bad. But yeah. And then I uh, went to Conquest, met Harry and Tonna. Um, and I was shocked by like the uh, the commitment levels they had there. Um, they were like there like four times of the five days throughout the week. Uh, just training every single day, like it was, it was mental. Like I, it was more intense than like times I'd spent at academies. Okay. Um, but it really helped me, man. I remember I was balancing contests also with playing futsal. Um, so I wasn't there all the time, but I always I'd be there when I could. Um, and yeah, the, the the fitness, the everything. Like I remember, like um, who was it that had crazy fitness? Samir, I, I swear, yeah, yeah, Samir, it is Samir, it is Samir. I remember this guy would just run for days and I was just like, how's he doing it? Um, but yeah, no, shout out to Conquest, man. Harry and Connor are like, doing their thing and condition people really well, really, really well. Talking about isolation, Samir's fitness in, in another sense because he's doing double sessions on their, on their Instagram lives. He's doing 12 o'clock ball work, 5 o'clock fitness, which just shows the commitment levels. But I was watching the, um, the football ones and there's a lot of tech focus, lots based on very much close cold ball control, touches, stuff like that. Is that something which obviously must have benefited you in terms of what you're doing now? Yeah, most definitely. I think um, like any sort of video format, any sort of video format of like technical sessions always helped me. Uh, I remember I used to always work for an Ardenio. Uh, like just again and again. I remember when I first like. I remember when the, the flip flap became a thing, like, and everyone wanted to do it. Like everyone was doing it like the really like the short way where it goes like like it doesn't like it's like boom boom. And I was like, no, I want to do like Ronaldinho and I like, take it really wide and then bring it back in. Like it helps, man. It really really helps. Like the, but I feel like in this day and age we have we have that benefit to what in the past obviously people didn't have like the videos and. Stuff like that. So yeah, nice no, good man. 
And going back to, so what did you make of the culture at Conquest? They're very family orientated. Everyone seems quite close. You obviously stay in contact with the guys, which is why you're on now. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's really good, man. It's really, really good. I feel like, because I remember uh, I'd always go to the sessions in uh, Isleworth, as I mentioned, and then everyone would go into a room afterwards. Um, it was like, I can't really remember exactly where the place was, but there was like a little room and there'd be like a meeting after it, literally every single session, every single day. And even for me, myself, like, I remember like going home afterwards, feeling like, like wow, like, I can actually get signed. Like, I feel like the, the conversations that Tonda and Harry have with the players after each session, because obviously everyone's there for the same reason. Everyone wants to be a pro footballer. So I feel like the conversations that Tonda and Harry were having with the players afterwards, I experienced myself really, really did help. And but it wasn't an environment where everyone's against each other to try and get signed. Like everyone like really helps each other. Like I remember in my team it was like me, Toby, uh, Samir, uh, Michael, um and yeah, everyone just bounced off each other and yeah, it's good, man. It's good. It's good. I'm happy to see it's still doing well as well. Oh, you talk about people trying to turn pro you didn't turn pro but you've been very successful in another field how did you sort of mold into that uh do you know where it was it was like I sort of got bored of 11 aside like I got to an age where so I got to like 16 to 18 the scholar stage and I, I spent time at like all the conference teams like Hampton and Richmond, Woking, Aldershot, all those teams there um and then I ended up at Maidenhead and there was a route there at Maidenhead, like to go 23's first team, etc. But I don't know, man. I just got to a stage where I wasn't really enjoying it. I don't know if it was a, if it was a mental thing. Um, there were, definitely was a mental thing, but like I just wasn't having fun. Like I was, I was, I found myself going to matches and like it was more of a chore than like oh yeah, like I've got a match today sort of thing. So. I was still playing, so I didn't want to seem to myself as though I was like doing nothing. So I was still like half-heartedly trying to make it pro. But then the thing that I really, really enjoyed was I'd have a match and I'd go meet my friends and we'd be on the street and we'd be not many people. And like, it's crazy to think that now that is what I do like full time. But um, yeah, I think it just naturally just transformed. Cause I always liked making videos, but it just wasn't never, it was never really a thing where you think like this will be what I do. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, it was just organic really. It was just natural. It just naturally just shifted. And here we are. <laughs> you play a lot of futsal still and you do the freestyling. Explain it a little bit more for some people who don't really understand what, it, what it's all about. Uh, so basically what I do is uh essentially i'm a youtuber but all of my videos are based around football skills uh not many people which you should know but if you don't know it's basically just like using the skills to kick it through an opponent's legs um and yeah it's um it's pretty uh, to be fair i i don't i touch on freestyle like all the stuff in the air and all that but i like to try and stay with stuff which can be like uh like reciprocated in a futsal match or a football match like something that can be used in real games um yeah man it's just uh, the, the flariest stuff you can think of um and yeah just putting it on video and help, hoping that the audience like it and finding creative ways to add in new concepts and new guests i feel like as well so yeah it's good you've done some really exciting things which we'll touch on in a moment but the amount of growth and how quickly it's happened you've got hundreds of thousands of followers on instagram youtube and stuff that must be quite surreal for you yeah, it is. It is to be fair. Um, the thing, the thing, I thought the thing that's most surreal is that it's real people. Do you know, like sometimes it's it's a thing where, um, like, I'll meet people in real life, or I'll go out and like, people are looking at me, sort of thing. And I'm paranoid. And I'm like, why are they looking at me? But then, then it turns out that like, oh yeah, like we watch your stuff. Like it's very surreal. Like I'm still in. I, was, I used to still be in the mindset of like, oh like something gonna happen right now, sort of thing. But yeah, like it's it is crazy, man. It's very it's a blessing. But I was never expecting it. Like I didn't start doing what I do to have the audience I've gained or to or any of the experiences that I've had. It's a, yeah, it's it's very surreal, man. It's very surreal. And as I said, you do forget that it's real people. Like you get obsessed with just looking at the numbers, 
And as the numbers go up, you're thinking like, oh, like, it's just, I don't know, I can't explain it. it. Like, it it just feels like it's numbers, not real people. But then you really think about it and you're like, wow, like, that is crazy. Yeah. You say about people who say they watch you and stuff. Where's the weirdest place someone's come up to you and said, oh, I love your stuff? Ooh. Uh, do you know what was sick? Like, in London, like, I receive a lot of love and I really appreciate that. But when I go abroad, like, okay, this was, wait. Yeah, this is probably the craziest, so. I I had a shoot in uh, Miami, America, and I went to like it wasn't even a Walmart; it was just like a random superstore. And I walked in, and I went to the to the front, and I was just trying to get, like, get Gatorade or something like that. And this guy went nuts; like the guy serving me, he went nuts; like he had to like double take, and like he was like just saying like, "Yeah, man, I love your videos, bro." I can't do American accent. He's like, "Yeah, I love your videos, bro." All of this. And, I couldn't believe it because it was in like such a secluded area. Like it wasn't Miami. It was like sort of like on the outskirts. Like, yeah, man, it was, there's, there's been a few. I've had like older people come up to me as well. Um, there's quite a few scenarios, but off the top of my head, I'd have to say that one in Miami because it was just so unexpected. And it was at like 1 a.m. in the morning as well. So. <laughs> I was going through your, obviously your Instagram, and your YouTube um, last night just to, pick up on some videos to talk about there were so many to choose from so many big names but one that stood out for me was Usain Bolt and when you played that charity game with him um, absolute legend you did a video what was it like meeting him because he's such a legend in his field and obviously playing alongside him do you know what that was that was crazy because I was told by like his uh, representative beforehand like you'll get some time with him but I was just thinking I won't I was just like I, w- I won't get any time with him like let's be real um, so I filmed with Perez on that same day, like 10 minutes before, and I was like, oh, like, this is crazy. Like, I remember watching Perez with, like, Henri and stuff, so it was mad. And then I remember walking down the tunnel at Stamford Bridge at Chelsea, and Bolt walked past me, and I like, put his hand on my shoulder, and like, he's, he's massive. This guy's a unit. Like, you don't realise it until you see him in real life. But he put his hand on my shoulder, and, he's, and he says something like, oh, you, you're the skills guy, something like that. And like, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, not realising that it's him. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and I looked back up and I was like, wait, what? And then I ran inside uh, to get my friend Dario, who was filming for me. Like, Dario, Dario, come now, come now, because we were having like a change room. We came out, uh, just talking to Bolt, like just chilling with him. Like, yeah, like, we're going to do some skills with you. He's like, nah, I don't do skills, blah, blah, blah. Um, but we roped him into doing the 1v1. It took convincing, but we roped him into doing the 1v1 and then obviously the video where I nutmeg him. Um, yeah, it was crazy, man. It was crazy. And I was really uh, happy as well because uh, my friend Dario that was with me as well, he's like part Jamaican. So like Usain Bolt was like a like, figure in his family. So for him to be able to meet him as well and have that experience with him, I, it, was, it was a good day. It was a good day to say the least. And you, you got this EA series you're doing now. How did that come about? That must be quite exciting for you. You get to go to different football league clubs and do a little bit against the pro players and stuff. Yeah, so that's basically uh, so EA and EFL. They'll both give they'll give me uh, a club list. And they'll say, all right, cool. This club is willing to give you two of their like most skillful players, and just do what you want with them, really. So we we'll just do like a skills challenge, a shooting base challenge, a two touch, just to keep it simple. Um, and then obviously it ends on like why I do the nutmeg challenge. Um, and it's been good, man. It's been really, really good. Like, um, all the players, I haven't had any problems with any of the players. They've all been well up for it. Um, and, yeah, luckily, so far, I'm going to touch wood, but every club I've been to, I've not made the players. So, I just, I've got to keep that going with the series. Um, but, yeah, no, it's been really fun, man. Another video which I think you're quite proud of yourself and one that's a highlight for you, the, the one you did with Yam, um, Wan Bissaka. Yeah, that was the video, yeah. Um, yeah, he's a good guy, man. I think uh, that, was a, that was an interesting one because it, I filmed with him while he was, like, massively, like, in the in the press and stuff about, be, like, I think that was a statistic, a statistic that came out saying, like, uh, he has the most tackles in all four leagues or something like that. And this was, like, a day before I filmed with him. I was just thinking like this. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna nutmeg him. <laughs> like, cause the thing is, like, if I go to film with someone and I just can't nutmeg them, like, it's a bit awkward, isn't it? It's just like, <laughs> all right, what now? Um, 
Yeah, it was a really good game, and we did like a fun challenge, like a kick-up challenge with like silly string and like trying to distract each other and stuff. Um, but yeah, I think I met with him twice, two times or three times, if I if I'm correct. Um, and yeah, it was it was good, but obviously a lot of it gets cut out as well. And he he's very good. I just put it like that. He's um, yeah, he's he's definitely probably one of the hardest people I played against, hundred percent. Well, one thing that people probably don't appreciate about what you do is the creativity that goes behind the sessions which you're going to film. How, how much enjoyment do you get out of that of trying to think about something outside of the box to use? Oh, yeah, I buzz off of it. I buzz off of it. Like, to be fair, it's a blessing and a curse because I'm always trying to think of stuff. Like, I catch it, like, even last night, for example, like, when I'm going to bed, like, I'm always trying to, like, think of new stuff because obviously people like I'm, I'm really grateful that people love the nutmeg videos and like versus the pros but I'm not going to get given a pro every week and like the, I know people enjoy the videos where I go to like the academies as well and play against like the whole team but once again I'm not going to get that every week so I need to I'm always having to try to think of stuff like in between those videos to try and get uh, stuff that people would enjoy on the same level um but I buzz off of it, man. Like, even if a video doesn't do, like, amazingly well, like, if, if I like that video and I think that the, the concept and the creative stuff behind it was good, uh, it brings me a lot of joy. Yeah, like, one of my videos, which doesn't even have the most views, like, I think it's one of my lowest views videos ever. It's just, like, a simple slip and slide challenge where we just put loads of washing up liquid on a, on a like, um, slippery surface and we just, like, took volleys and, like, the silly stuff. Like, those are, like, some of my favourite videos. Um, but yeah, no, it's good. I, I enjoy it a lot. I know you're a big advocate of mental health. I'm similar myself, and you do a lot of work with young minds. Let's um, let's just talk a little bit about that. Why you got into it, and what you sort of do? Yeah, so um, I went through my own sort of like little journey uh, regarding mental health, and uh, it. I was very surprised. So the more I learned about myself, the more I realised that there isn't really enough to make people aware of what goes on, if that makes sense. So like when I was like 16 to 19 or 20, I'd say there wasn't really enough info. There was enough information if you actively search for it. But when you're like, like down, you're not going to really actively search for it because you're not in the best of places. So I feel like there should be just more stuff just thrown out there and like people with platforms like myself, for example, like constantly speaking about it so that it's just naturally there, just information that can be grabbed and looked into um so i started working with young minds um literally just to raise awareness of mental health so mental health awareness week i'll literally i'll go to schools um i'll talk a bit about my own journey uh things i've realized about myself things that helped uh things that still do help of course um and yeah it's honestly it's it's not really i like to do it organically and very naturally uh i don't like sit down and pretend I'm an expert and talk about it like um because I don't know everything I'm still learning myself but I just like to just do a couple of campaigns here and there just with advice which w what helps me might not help other people but if it helps three people from the hundreds or thousands of people it's a it's a win for me and I have had messages from people saying like interviews I've done and whatnot have helped so it is in my career, like it's it's a big goal for me, like to to help raise awareness of, of mental health, especially for young males in London, especially. Um, and who knows, maybe start my own charity one day. But we'll, we'll get to that level when we get there. <laughs> it's, it's a great thing, isn't it? That it's being spoken about more publicly. Like there's movements on Twitter. It gets spoken a lot, a lot about on various TV shows and stuff. They dedicate a lot of time to it now, which is a big boost from where it was, where it was about like a stigma where people were afraid to talk. Yeah, most definitely. I've seen, I've seen the increase of engagement around it uh, on normal television, on social media, as you said, massively over the last few years. And it's good to see because one thing you notice as well is as more people speak about it, that then encourages other people which used to look at it and be like, oh, like, I'm not, I'm not like, I don't cry, I don't, I'm not weak sort of thing. Like, then they're the guys that will then like, now message and be like, hey, like, I relate to what you're feeling. I feel like that's the main thing. When you relate to someone else's comment that you see, it makes you realise like, oh, okay, like, I'm not like, 
uh, like weird, you know, so that it's normal, like other people go through the same thing. And I feel like that bond between like seeing that someone else goes through the same thing, I feel like that's the main thing that helps people. And it's so simple. It's literally just one comment. You see it, boom, you feel better. Like it's, it's good, man. Like it's only going to get more as well. Um, and that's obviously what I want to try to help with. Um, and yeah, praise the YouTube community as well, because there's a lot of people that, um, a lot of people that help with it as well. But I'm trying to get like the football community on YouTube to be involved as much as possible. So yeah. Those things you're doing are great things. What are your progression plans and targets for yourself in terms of your brand and your channels? Um, to be fair, right now, um, I've got a big project which is being planned at the moment, um, which is going it, to... Um, I can't say too much about it, but I'm trying to figure out what I should say, but uh, to be fair, like, a, lot, a lot of stuff is coming. Like, I just want to carry on. For me, the main thing is honestly, like, it's obvious, but the videos, like, I, I can do loads of other stuff, but like, just making sure my videos are up to scratch, that's my main like, priority at the moment. And I do have, like, as I said, a big project coming where it's going to bring a whole different form of content of what people like to watch me do. Um, like, for example, people always say that they want to see me play in matches. And um, that's something I'm concentrating on a lot as well. Um, I want to do a lot more match highlights. Um, so it's important to show that you can do like what you do in my videos on a like real like court, like futsal court or football pitch, for example. But yeah, man, just I'm just trying to nutmeg whoever I can nutmeg. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, no. Nah, realistically, I'm just trying to make sure that my content stays up to scratch, and I just stay consistent that's my main thing just stay consistent just don't stop just keep going so that's that's the main thing for me i'll be happy with that jamie to finish off do some quick fire questions say whatever first thing that comes into your mind first one what's your favorite cheat meal or takeaway pizza it's not even pizza oh yeah pizza I don't know. <laughs> right what's your favorite topping uh jalapenos who's your favorite person who you played with or done a video with uh, Phil Foden? <laughs> yeah, Foden was really nice, yeah. If you had to be an animal, which one would you be and why? Uh, what the hell? This isn't really quick fire, is it? I don't know, a lion? Yeah, lions are... No, I'd be, I'd be a bearded dragon. I like those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If there was a movie about your life, which actor would you like to play the main role of yourself? Um, I'm so bad with names of actors. Oh, do you know who I really like? Uh, Tom Holland. I like him, Tom Holland. Uh, which superpower would you like to have? Uh, invisibility. Yeah, that's why I said, yeah. I like to be invisible. That really is a good one. What, where would you want to, if you could travel anywhere in the world right now, where would you go? Brazil. Brazil. Obviously, lockdown permitting. <laughs> yeah. Um, and finally, what would you be if you weren't um, a YouTuber content creator? Uh, unemployed. <laughs> 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 no, I'm joking. I'd be, um, I believe that I would, I think I, I don't know you. Know, that's a mad question. Uh, I think uh, that is a crazy question. I don't know. And that shows how much of a shambles my life is and how lucky I am that I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolute pleasure to have you on. Thanks for being on with us today. Um, anyone out there who wants to see any of the videos we talked about and the wide range of content that Jamie has, his YouTube and stuff will be below. Um, what's your Instagram? Shout out your Instagram. London Movement, so LDN Movements, and yeah, the YouTube's the same. And guys, remember, take care, stay safe, stay indoors, and do as much as you can. Thanks very much. Nice. No